Well, welcome back, guys. I'm Thomas, the Chief Operating Officer for Graves Golf, and I'm excited to be your host tonight for our July 2023 uh, playing talk with Graves Golf. And so tonight, Todd Graves, the co-founder of Graves Golf, is going to be here, and he's going to be talking to you about everything when it comes to unleashing your golf swing and being able to really get some power out of your lower body. But uh, I get the opportunity, uh, which honestly, this is my first time being uh, your host uh, for Plane Talk. So I'm pretty excited about it. But we've got lots of cool things that have been going on at Graves Golf uh, over the last few months. We've been uh, talking to you guys about our performance center. Uh, I was in there today walking through with our contractor talking about electrical spots and network and all that thing. So really, really excited about the great things that we have going here at Graves Golf. Um, next thing I kind of want to talk about, this has been really exciting. So back at the uh, first of the year, we started a new program, actually two new levels of our online coaching program. So our elite coaching and our uh, VIP coaching program. Uh, if you don't know much about this, just kind of high level overview uh, allows you to have a personal coach. Uh, we do weekly Zoom sessions. We, um, you know, there's, there's additional discounts. It includes a school um, and, and some other varying factors. And one of the coolest things that we've done is we've created our elite eight assessments. So now not only can we, you know, it's not just drills, they're not drills, they're not, they're not things, but it's to be able to help assess you, to be able to go out to the course, work through these assessments, and then you're able to score yourself. You have then a dashboard that that information gets entered in and you're able to track yourself over time. Well, we can also track you over time and help keep you accountable to that. Uh, and, and everything uh, through those different types of assessments we have uh, that's kind of broken up through the game. So one of the things that we've done is we've gone through the first quarter. So over the last 90 days, uh, our elite and VIP students have had eight different assessments that they've been working through. And so I want to share some of our winners uh, that uh, so far who have had some of the best scores with that. So I think we got those and we can put that up. All right. So the first one is uh, Timmy time, uh, Martin McNally. Uh, Timmy time is where you're, it's, it's basically a, a clock drill that you're trying to go through one through 12 and, and kind of pro progress through there. Um, Mark has gone through 15 times. Uh, our landing zone uh, assessment, Jim Roy, 10. Putting it all together, Mark, 18. Uh, our lag zone assessments, Dave McDowell, 10. Guys, I'm uh, super excited about how well uh, these folks have done so far. I think we've got the next round here. Uh, our 80-20 uh, drills with Mark, with 10. Uh, the 3D challenges um, are um, stay in your lane with driver, Rick Bragdon, Bob Borders, um, the, with the Ironside, Robert. You know, these are, are if, if you want to be able to know a little bit more about the individual assessments that we have, you can let us know. We can kind of talk through, uh, through everything that we have within the elite program. But I do want to go ahead and call out our MVP for the first quarter, Mark Manali, um, he had some of the highest scores in, it looks like, uh, seven uh, of the eight um, either had the highest or tied for those. So, Mark, congratulations. Uh, I've got a special gift that we'll get sent to you uh, for being our VIP, our first VIP of our Elite Eight assessments. Uh, really, really excited. Great job and great job to everybody uh, who completed those. We have our next round of Elite Eight assessments that are rolling out to our students uh, and, and being able to, to kind of start working on some other areas. But, you know, the Elite students, you guys can still continue to work on those previous, uh, previous eight assessments and, and build on that. If you have questions and you're interested to know a little bit more about, you know, what's, what's this Elite program, what's this VIP program when it comes to, uh, to what we have, you can email me at thomasp at gravesgolf.com. Uh, and I'll either be able to help you or get you over to Shane or somebody else within our team. Uh, so again, Thomas P at gravesgolf.com, uh, and we can talk a little bit more about that, uh, the personalized coaching, and really how we can help you accelerate uh, your, your learning of the single plane swing within uh, those levels of coaching. Um, we do want to go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and bring up uh, Todd Graves, co-founder of Graves Golf. Uh, talk to him a little about uh, something that we've got coming up, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, an offer that we have for you guys that's going to be limited uh, starting night. So, Todd. Thank you, Thomas. How you doing, buddy? Appreciate it. Good, Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for everything. So, um, we've got coming up, starting Monday, Power Generation Masterclass. 
Yeah. Pretty excited about that. Can we maybe give like a quick overview? Well, so probably the most common question that we get asked at schools when we're doing all the training and single plane training is how do I hit the ball longer distance? Yeah. Um, because a lot of times what you see is really good technique. Right. And we, we improve people's technique and they still want to get more speed and more power. Yeah. And we see as instructors um, more than anything is that there's some instability in the lower body that happens a lot. And the number one question I get is, well, I want more speed, but we have to create more stability in the lower body. Sure. I know from a from personal experience, not only developing my own golf game, but helping you know thousands of golfers develop theirs and, and all the students we teach throughout the year, that, the, that they, there's ways you can control the lower body and stabilize it to get the speed out of your body. Right. Because what happens is so many people try to um, swing harder. Like many people out there are trying to swing harder. I'm trying to hit it farther. Sure. They go swing harder. And, and no one gets any faster. And they work hard because it's not that they're weak. Yeah. It's not that they're not able. They don't have, I mean, these are some of these guys. They all, they, guys will come to me and go, I'm a great athlete, but I can't, you know, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And it's because the lower body is not a speed producer. Sure. It is a stabilizer. But if it's unstable... You can't get the speed out of your body. Right. So we put together the master class. Yeah. And the master class is designed to help people get the speed out of their body that's already there. Yeah. And it's not about going out and work, lifting weights and sure. getting stronger. Those, those elements are important. Right. But that's not what this class is about. It's really about saying, hey, we have to, I'm going to talk about it tonight, learn the things with the lower body you have to do correctly to then get the most out of your upper body yeah. speed. Well, and I'm really excited about it. So quick story is obviously I've had, you know, we've been working on developing this and and as I continue to work on my own game and single plane swing, I'm trying to get, you know, a little bit, stretch myself a little bit more. And so I've been working on my lower body. I've been working on some of these techniques. I went out with the guys the other day Hit and I somebody. smashed everybody. 20 yards past, past James Bell, past David Cotter, past um, uh, wow. Brad Fulton. All of them. I'm sitting out middle of the fairway, 20 yards past them. Um, the second shot wasn't that great, but hey. It yeah. was the first one was good. good start. <laughs> I well, I mean, it. it's, it's true because, I mean, I've hit balls with you before many times and and you're not a small guy. You've got plenty of strength, but you don't get always get this. Right. You don't always get out of, out of that. And it's not that you you don't need to go to the gym and work hard. You need to, the, the proper use of yeah. the body. So Absolutely. we're going to talk about that tonight. Yeah, no, it's really excited. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so unleashing is really a great term for what we're going to do tonight, because there is already speed that you have inside of your body. And, and all of you out there, I mean, if I ask this question to you, how many of you want to hit the ball longer distances? And it's really not always about longer distances, which I think everybody wants to hit the ball longer distances. There's consistency factors to it and the compressing the ball in a consistent way. All these things are about what we talk about, speed and power and generating longer, more consistent golf shots. But one of the things that I see as an instructor, and this, and, but I mean, I'm doing this now for since, you know, 1994, really, but so for so many years is I see, you know, people are, they start getting really, really great in their technique. They start getting everything pretty correct and they start kind of getting to a plateau of their distance. And so you may be one of those guys that have experienced some plateaus and how far you hit a golf ball. Maybe and you might be saying, man, I keep slowing down even or not hitting this far. So you may have a problem trying to get more distance. Obviously we want to hit the ball longer, straighter. Some of you may be out there trying to work harder to get more speed. You know, you're swinging harder at it, maybe even out of control, losing maybe the, the, the balance of your body when you're trying to do it. So you may be doing that and still not get anything out of it. And then you lose consistency. And that's a problem with that. And then you may have back problems. Back problems is another factor in all of this because you swing harder and you're just, not, you're just not able to put it all together and you're getting less consistent. And I see all these things happen because of what we're going to talk about tonight, which is the promise I'm going to make to you tonight, that if you get control of what I'm going to call, we're going to call it the sacrum, but it's really where the spine connects with the lower body. If we get control of that sacrum where the power is generated, which is what I'm going to talk about, that I can give you distance and I can, I can unlock and unleash the distance that's already inside of you. But I will say this, if you don't learn to do this, and I'm going to show it to you tonight, what you got to learn to do. If you don't want to do this, you will struggle with your speed and distance forever. And it's, I'm not telling you you got to go to the gym and get stronger. That's not part of this. It's learning how to use your lower body in a way. And people talk about using the ground, but we're going to talk about some of that. It's not really about, okay, go get stronger. Whatever. 
It's about how to use and position lower body and use the, the forces that you have inside of your body to let the upper body produce the speed. Because here's the way it works. And, and I'll talk to you about this from a biomechanics perspective. And here's why I talk about it. it when I talk about 3D motion and how the body works, because I'm not a, I'm not a theoretical guy. I'm not a anecdotal guy. I rarely stand up here and says, well, I did it, so you should do it. I don't do that. The, what I, I, I think you, in order for me to give you clarity on exactly what you need to do to, to help, actually help you, I have to get you super clear on what must happen for you to not only speed up the process of, of getting this faster and better, but doing it the correct way and, and not putting a ton of effort into it, but doing the right amounts of effort to get the result that you want. I'll give you a quick story. So in, in, my, in my search for helping you and obviously helping myself, but also knowing more about what was actually going on in the golf swing, I, I really dug into kinematic sequencing, the biophysics of the body, how the body works, how it generates speed, and how it sequences for speed. And when you dig into this stuff, you, you, you step outside of the golf industry a lot of times because there's a lot of really smart people, much smarter than me, that discuss biophysics and how the body works and, and the, and the kinetic, kinetic chain and how these things happen. And one of these people, and I have Tristan, my nephew over here, worked with one of the, one of the instructors that I worked, that I learned from. Matter of fact, I met him through Tristan. He was a, he was a, a throwing coach, and he taught me a lot about the biophysics of throwing a ball. And I'll tell you a quick story about that experience because it relates a lot to what I see golfers have a problem with. So I'm digging into how the body produces rotational speed because golfers produce rotational speed. When you swing a golf club, you're producing rotational speed of the body. And if you produce rotational speed, you produce arm speed and hand speed and you produce club speed. And so if you throw a ball, same thing, you got to produce rotational speed, arm speed, hand speed, ball speed. So rotational sports are all pretty much the same when it comes to rotational velocities of the body. And there's a lot that goes on to have, to have you produce rotational speeds and stuff. So when you go out there and swing a golf club and you're practicing and you're really working hard at your swing and you, and you misplace the body or do not use it correctly, and I, I'm going to use that term, use the body correctly, you're not able to generate the body's ideal potential rotational speeds, and then you don't get it in the club. So you don't get the kinetic chain of speed. Well, I wanted to learn more about this stuff, so I flew down to the USC to meet Tom House. Tom House is known as the throwing doctor. You've probably seen, he, he, he worked with Nolan Ryan and many of the football, uh, NFL football quarterbacks. And I admit, I had, I'd, I'd met Tom when he was here in Oklahoma City, but I flew down to USC to spend time with him to really, really dig in. He was going to do some measuring and quantification. And I'm standing, I, I show up at the, at the baseball diamond at USC and I'm waiting for Tom. I got about 30 minutes before I actually meet him. He's, he's, he's coaching and I'm standing on the field watching what's going on. Now, if I, if I showed up at a, at a throwing coaches clinic where he has all these really well-known athletes out there, you would expect to see people throwing balls. I mean, that's what you would expect to see, right? Everybody's throwing. It's not what I saw. The first thing I see is a bunch of athletes running bases, but not running bases forward, running bases backwards. All right. So I see them running, yeah, backwards like this. They're running bases. And I said, okay. And then I see them kind of mosey off the field and they go to this corner of this fence and they're doing this kind of stretching routine. And so I'm kind of watching the, the, the regimen that these athletes are going through. And so when I finally got to Tom and we, we got to discussing this, I'm like, I just got a quick question for you. Why were they running backwards? And he says, Todd, he goes, listen, the body can only be as fast as you can decelerate the body. You, can't, you can only accelerate the body as much as the body can decelerate. Oh, that was new to me, right? That was news. I thought that was very interesting. And then recently I was working with some coaches. I, I, I meet some very high level coaches. I'm out in California and I'm talking to some coaches. And they said, Todd, listen, and I'm, I'm, I, I was, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm 56 years old, so I'm, I'm starting to get up there where I'm losing some strength and I'm losing flexibility. I'm like, okay, I got to get, get on this. And I was talking to these trainers, and he says to me, he goes, Todd, you should spend a three-to-one ratio on the decelerators of your body. 
three to one. In other words, in other words, you go to the gym and you do that's a pushing motion. If you do a chest exercise, pushing motion, a curl is a is a basically a a, a pulling motion, but it's working on the front of your arms. Most of the time, if you do squats, right, you, it, it, things like this, these are all pushing motions. However, the back of your body are the are things that pull your body. So your, your decelerators are the back of your body. The, the, the pushing part is the front. Most of us, when we get in our car, we, 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 we're pushing and pulling with the front of our bodies, but the backs of our bodies gets, get ignored. So what happens is we get super weak on all the stuff, the stabilizers of our body. When I saw those athletes running backwards in the field, they were working on their stabilizers. How many of you have worked on the stabilizers of your body? And many of you are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Probably not. That's what I want to talk about tonight is we have to understand what's stabilizing the body because if we do it right with the lower body, if we stabilize the lower body, we get, there's no speed down here. This, this, this lower body is positioning itself. The speed's all in the upper body. 90% of what you accelerate the club with is upper body. But if you don't have this, the stabilization and the decelerators able to use the lower body correctly, you lose what you can do upstairs. Nothing, you can't move the upper body correctly. So that's really what the conversation is tonight. And I want to show you, I want to walk you through what, I, what I'm talking about. And we're going to do some, we're going to, I'm going to show you some videos here in just a second. But I want to say this before I grab the video. One, if you know me as a coach, clarity is key. I want to give you 100% clarity on what we're, we're de dealing with tonight, what we're talking about. But I also want you to know that you got to measure this stuff. If you don't measure it correctly, we're, I'm a measuring guy. And I, I want to, when you work with our coaches, we're measuring you. Measuring you means we're, we're making sure you're practicing correctly and doing it right. It doesn't do any good for you to go out there and think you're doing it right and not get it right. So you're going to see me when I analyze this right now, talk about my goal is to give you clarity and my go, goal is to understand how we measure and do it right. And so you can then also do it right. Okay, so let's do this. I want to get super clear on exactly Yeah, here we go. I want to get super clear on exactly what we look at when I'm showing you what stabilizes lower body, and I'm going to look at the sacrum. Now, what you're seeing on video here is Mo Norman from a back view. And this view of a golf swing to me, and, and in the master class, I go through this in, in very, very, a lot of detail because how Mo is accomplishing this is very important. But I want, you to, I want to show you what you have to accomplish with lower body. This is what must be done if you want to stabilize lower body. Is, is I, I basically have to mark an area here right in his lower back. I just drew a line on it. And what this is, is where the, the sacrum is. I can do a little cross here too. Right, right in that area there is the sacrum. Right in the middle of that X. And that is where the spine connects to the pelvis. Now, when you're... When you're Using the body as a rotational tool to, to accelerate your arms and, and hands and shoulders, this area, because this is what is this is right in the middle between your upper body and lower body, right where the lower body is connected to the ground and your upper body is connected to the club, this is such a critical area to get some control in. And I use the word control because if this is out of control, if this area is not used correctly or, or controlled correctly, when you lose control of this area, you lose the ability to produce speed. This is such a critical part of what I, when I coach people to single plane swing to get them finally to reach their potentials is when they get really good at using their lower body. So that's the first thing I want you to understand is that there is this spot here, the sacrum that I, that I look at that I, I, I consider a measurable. The other thing I want you to realize is when you look at him framing up his legs, so you see how he's creating a stable base. And this is not just his legs. This is the, the position of his feet. There's a certain position of the feet you must have. There's a position of the legs you have. And there's obviously a tilt of the body that, makes it, that basically puts the body in a position. I, I kind of laid this up for a tilt here. It, it, the tilt of the body, the leg position, the foot position. So he's establishing a stabilized lower body position, which is really another way of saying he's controlling where the position of that lower back is. This is where you have to start the whole conversation. Because if you're, if you're not in a stable, set position at, at address, you're not going to be able to do the rest of this. And I'm going to show you what happens during the swing. So here we are. 
I'm gonna take a mark, I'm gonna mark that lower spine here, and actually I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see it. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take Mo into a, a, a rotational backswing movement. And as he does that, I'm gonna take him all the way back. Now, I want you to notice that that sacrum has moved itself. I can't really do two lines, I'll do longer. So that sacrum has moved itself forward from a rotational aspect. In other words, because he was rot he rotated, that lower back gets somewhat moved forward. Now it's not a lot, but you can see it moves forward to where it started. Now, you could call that lateral. Some people call that a lateral movement, but it's not really lateral because he's taken a, a pelvis, which is basically an elongated oval, and he's turned it. And because he's turned that, the center of it moves slightly forward, but it happened because of rotation. It didn't happen because of a slide. I, and this is very important. Now, how did it do that? It's because of that trail leg position. So again, the position of the lower body, where his feet and ankles and, and legs were, allowed that to move forward. Now, watch when he comes back as he goes down. You're going to see that area in his body. It moves back. It goes actually almost exactly back when he's at impact. It's right back to where it starts. Maybe just a fraction. It's right there. And now watch what happens when he goes through. It actually moves forward. So you're seeing this rotational sacrum movement where, and I'm going to go back to this where you can see it one more time. Because he's bracing against the leg in the backswing, and when he transitions, he again braces to the lead knee, he's controlling the sacrum. And th this is not showing you, it's only showing you the, uh, the horizontal axis of this, but this is showing you, if, if you get that under control, and I, I want to I kind of put the iPad down for a second, I want to show, show you something really quickly. When, when I see golfers having problems, am I, am I live? When I see golfers having problems, and I'll do this from a down-the-line perspective, when they take it back, one of the biggest issues you have is when they start coming down, they, they extend their body. And we're going to talk about why that occurs. You get this extension. So in other words, you get the body going underneath. Well, that changes your tilted position. So now you, you can't really make an angular, angular approach of the hands to the ball, so you come out of it this way. How many of you slice the ball have a problem getting down to it, inconsistencies, the club comes over the top. You know, there's so many things that happen because the body, and, and the reason the body's doing this, the reason the body is extending like this is because the decelerators, when you try to support the body and control the body coming down, they're not stable. They're, they're, you don't have the, the stability in the glute muscle in the back of the leg, and so you, you don't get stable, and then you can't rotate from that stable position, which is what's needed to compress that golf ball. So being able to work the body in a downward fashion where that sacrum moves down, because let's watch this for a second. Let me bring that back up with Mo. You'll notice, I'll go back to the address position. I'm going to draw a horizontal line now on the sacrum. That's right at basically the top of his belt line. It's a little tilted, but there's the top of the belt line there. And you'll watch him go down. You're going to see a downward movement. Now the top of the belt line is somewhere in here. So... So you're seeing a bit of, you know, there's like an inch and a half, two inch downward movement there of that sacrum moving down. That's because the knees are stabilizing and supporting. So this is keeping it under control, and now we can accelerate upper body. The control of the sacrum is such a key element, and you must learn to do this because the standing up, the extension, the leg extensions, the extension of the pelvis throws the upper body into a, I got to cast the club and release its angles because you can't maintain stability and you release those angles. The, when I coach and, and when our coaches teach you this stuff, we're doing this, we're measuring this stuff. We have to quantify, is it getting in the right position to deliver that club correctly and compress that golf ball? Is the body in position to actually produce the speed out of the upper body? Now, I wanna show you one more chart real quick, if I can find it here. And this is kind of the, this will be an interesting chart for you here. And I actually put a back, I put a back angle on, on the chart here of my swing. Now, I'll blow this up so you can see it. And I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to scroll through this. So you see what's happening on the chart. You're going to see a bunch of lines and squiggles, and then you see 
up and down movement of these lines. So what this is, this is a kinematic sequence chart. This is each one of these lines, the red line is actually the pelvis movement, the green line is the torso, the blue is the arms, and the basically orange or brown line are the, are the hands. And what you're seeing is you're seeing acceleration. So you're seeing right now zero, but you're seeing a negative acceleration of those body parts. What that means is directionally, I'm going into a backswing. So it's a accelerated backward movement. That's why it's below the zero line. But notice how at a certain point, the pelvis is not going as fast. The red line is not going as fast as the brown line. Well, that means the pelvis is not going, is going slower than my hands. So then what you see is the pelvis goes positive first. See it go above the zero? That means the pelvis is moving towards the target in a positive direction first. And notice the hands are not positive yet until I get to the top, after the top of the backswing. So not to get overly complicated with this chart, but what you're seeing is acceleration. And then here's the most important part of this chart. I want you to show you this right here. Notice, watch right here. This is when the red line goes down, then the green line, then the blue line, and I'll move this down, and then the brown line. That There's impact right there at impact. So what you're seeing here, see how the red line dives down? See how the green line then dives down? Then the blue line dives down, and then the brown line at the very end dives down. Let me explain this. This is a sequence of events. This is, this is the kinematic sequence or kinetic chain of how things are happening. Pelvis, torso, arms, hands, club. So that's how it, things accelerate in the body. When you use the lower body correctly, here's, what, here's what's mandatory about this chart. That red line must accelerate positively first, so it must go positive first, and it must decelerate first in, this, in the chain. Every good ball striker, every good player, has a torso, a pelvis torso sequence one, two. So it's a one pelvis, two torso, three arms, four hands, five club. The one, two, three, four, five sequence. All good golfers, every one. There's not one good golfer that doesn't have a one, two sequence pelvis and then torso, red, green. And so when I say control the sacrum of the lower body, what it means is you're into your backswing positionally you can move that lower body in a one sequence so that torso could move in a two sequence. Control. I'm not saying fast. I'm not saying you got to spin the hips. I'm not saying you got to rotate. That, that's a mistake. You have to basically stabilize against the trail leg and then stabilize into the lead leg. And that transition has to happen correctly to control the sacrum. Because if we do that, upper body now is in a position to produce speed. I'll give you a quick analogy. And this is... This is the stuff I love, by the way. I, I love watching people gain control of their golf swings because I see really good technique a lot of times. I'll see guys have great hand position, great club position, playing in the club, nice single plane, and they just lose all their speed coming down. And they're like, what's going on? I'm like, you lost control of the most, the control center of the golf swing is right there in your sacrum. It's right here. And, and you're in a great position and you lost control of the control center and the upper body goes, you know what, Todd? Forget it. I can't, I can't produce any speed. And I see this happen so often. They lose that control center. And it's because their, their feet are extending. They're moving all around. They're rolling. Things that we cover in the master class, things you can easily fix. Not hard to do, but you got to know what you're doing. Um, so, so this kinematic sequence thing is when the, the, the base pelvis, torso, arms, hands, club. And so that's what you're seeing in this chart. Now, getting control of that is where your power is. Because here's, here's what you learn in these, in these sequences, and you can see on the chart, you, you have things accelerating and decelerating. The analogy that I always teach people about as far as the red, the pelvis red line going down first, then the green line, then the blue line, then the brown line, is consider this. If the body from the top of the swing, and this is where most kinematic sequences is approached, is from the top of the swing, when you establish your backswing position, you're, you're, in a, you're in a leverage position here, okay? You're stable and you're leveraged. Then you're going to stabilize. So there's that first move of getting into your lead side, okay? Now you, you're able to produce power and generate speed. So the first thing that happen, has to happen is a stabilization of the body. If the body doesn't get stable first, lower body, red line first, it, it's not going to be able to let the upper body produce speed. And why does that happen? Because 
The upper body needs to use the lower body. It needs to be used by the upper body. If you're out of position with your lower body, there's no stability or reinforcement for it to use. So this analogy was not mine. It was given to me about how the kinematic chain works. And it's like a horse race. And you have horses that are in basically in the, in the chute and they're getting ready to, to run. And you have a red horse, you have a green horse, you have a blue horse, and you have a brown horse. And they all, they let them out of the gate. So here we go. We let them out of the gate in the downswing. Well, the red horse gets out front, and then right behind it is the green horse and the blue horse and the brown horse. And so you got these horses running. Now, it, the, you, you might, we got to make sure the brown horse wins the race, right? Because the brown horse is, is your hands, and they got to accelerate. So you want the brown horse to be the fastest horse at the end. So what happens is, is in order for the brown horse to win, the green horse grabs the red horse, and he says, I'm going to use you and catapult you past me. Instead of me trying to figure it out myself, but what happens is when the green horse that wants to use the red horse tries to catapult itself, if that red horse is not stable, it can't use it. So it's this kinematic chain of each one of these horses using the next horse to catapult that brown horse past everybody. And so the chain is a bunch of, a bunch of acceleration and stabilizations happening. So let me go through it in the swing. Let me demonstrate this. So I'm in the back swing. I'm stable, right? I'm positioned for leverage. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in the gate. I'm in the gate. I stabilize lower body. See my lead leg stable. How can I do that? Foot position, leg position. I did it with positioning, and I moved the lower body. Now, the horses are racing. And so it's basically said, okay, I've got, now, if you notice on the chart, things go kind of the same speed for a little while. Then I get to about here. Now, I better stabilize this so I can do what? Accelerate this. And I got to stabilize this so I can accelerate this. So the chain is, it's a one, two, three, four chain, like that. That's how it's all happening in the swing. I talk to the guys in biophysics, guys that we, I, I deal with all the time, about, and I ask them, what is the absolute? If you had one major fault in a golf swing, you could have the best technique in the world, best positions, club face is perfect, plane is perfect. What's the one main flaw to screw up a golf thing? The one. They said, mess the, mess the sacrum up. Mess up the, power, the control center. If you mess up this control center, all this, these horses lose their ability to accelerate the last horse, which is your hands and then the club. You can't produce speed. So if I could just help you with, and many of you are already working on the single plane thing. Many of you are already do, doing a lot of this stuff. But if I could just the goal of the master class that we put together is to teach you how to gain control of that sacrum, use, use the positions of your lower body, secure that sacrum area into a position, learn how to transfer that into its position, accelerate the pelvis so you can use it, and then you can start swinging faster and faster and faster. It's funny, the other day I, was, I, was, I had the SD4 I was measuring, and I was trying to hit a seven iron, I was Sometimes I go out there and I just play around with it. And I was hitting a seven iron at about 167 yards. Seven iron, 167 is not bad for me. And I was like, I wonder if I can get this to 175. Get a seven iron to 175. That's, that's pretty, pretty nice. And I was, I, was, I was having a hard time. I was, I was working. I was working down. I was working all the stuff I'm doing in the class. And all of a sudden, I started hitting the positions better, the stuff I teach you in the class. And I started getting a little more into that, that lowered pelvis position, which I like. And I started seeing 171, 172, 173, and a seven iron for me. So I was able to gain, you know, five, six yards with my seven iron just from the stuff I I'm teaching you in this class. Because if you use the lower body positionally in that ground correctly, you can start compressing and accelerating that club better. And it's not always about acceleration because it's, sometimes the club wasn't showing up faster, but the compression and the sound of the ball was getting more energy out of the ball which is another factor to this, which many of you who are jumping out of the shot and coming out of it aren't able to compress. So again, you guys have worked hard to get more speed, but you've been maybe doing it in the wrong way. This entire class that, we're put, that I put together is not only going to teach you everything you need to know about getting this out of your lower body or getting it in the correct spot to get the most out of your upper body, but it's also going to help you measure it to make sure you're doing it correctly. And I'm gonna, I want to get you that 5, 10, 15, 20 yards um, and see you start accelerating the club better. So that's really what the masterclass is all about. And I'll give you, I'll give you one quick story before Thomas gets back up here. 
the the way that I always like to to do things is I, I know if you're like me, you don't want to waste your time, right? You want it, you want give me the answers, give me what to do, tell me what's going on. The class we put together is I did it by what, why, how, and now. So what what are we teaching you? Why are we teaching you this? Because what's the what's the relevant factors to it? How are you gonna how are you gonna do it? And what you need to be doing right now to get it right? And that's what the entire class is designed around. So I look forward to you finally. I mean, maybe it's finally getting the speed out of your lower body, but I know that that the class I put together, it's the most asked for class and in information over the last two years that I get asked. It's not just about speed. Hey Todd, I want more speed. It's like Todd, I'm having trouble with my transition. I'm having trouble with the red green transition. How do you get the red to go before the green? And that's what this class is all about. Now I've, you know, I've talked about this stuff a lot, but I finally put a class together that's going to define exactly not only how you can generate that power out of your lower body, but also the drills and stuff that I use that help all the students do it too. But one of the things I was I thought was kind of interesting is you talked a bit more about the braking systems as part of some of this this lower body. Yeah. One of the things I know the last time that um, um, oh, the guy that's playing on Roberto, Roberto, you were talking about how to slow him down and, and some breaking in some of the bodies. Can you tell maybe a little bit of story about that and yeah. kind of some of the things there. We've got just a few minutes, then we'll roll in some of the rest. So of this. Roberto came, came to me. I mean, Roberto's that's a great player. He's got a beautiful golf swing. Very, I mean, he's six foot three, great athlete, but he's got all this speed and this power. So power, speed generation. It's interesting about Roberto because speed generation was not a problem for him, but control is. And in other words, when you got tons of speed, you got another problem to deal with. You gotta you gotta get the club face square because your speeds affect the velocity of the golf ball and rotational side, you know, angles. And so I slowed him down. <laughs> Roberto, I'm like, I'm gonna slow you down. And what I mean by slowing down is not necessarily slowing down the club, but slowing the body down. Because because the body has two sides to it. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, is the golf swing right-sided or left-sided? And I think this is the answer that Thomas is looking for. Is the golf swing right-sided or left-sided? And the, it's both-sided. But the question that's not being asked that should be asked in that question is, it's, it's when-sided. So it's not, is, the, is, is, the, is it all right arm, is it all left arm? It's when is the, when is the left side in play and when is the right side in play? I mean, I'm right-handed, but it'd be opposite for a left-handed person. So in other words, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a number of things in the backswing. So in the backswing, I'm stabilizing and I'm rotating and accelerating. You see it in that chart. You see acceleration and deceleration in the backswing. So I'm accelerating and then decelerating. Then I'm accelerating, stopping, and then this thing is rotating, accelerating, and then it decelerates, and then this thing accelerates. So it, it's left side, then right side. So it's the sequence of events. So sequence, sequence is another way of saying when are things happening during the swing. So there's no, there's no right-sidedness or left-sided to a golf swing. It's when the, when the lead, I call it lead side and trail side. This is the lead side. This is the trail side. When is the lead side in an accelerated motion? When is the trail side in an accelerated motion? And that's what happens in sequencing. It's not hard to learn. Positions matter. You're going to find this in the master class. Your positions matter. Like the position, I'll give you a quick example. If you want to screw up your golf swing really fast, Shift your, shift your sacrum to the right when you start. Because what happens is when you're over here, you can't angularly put your body in a position and you can't, when your pelvis is, ro- is extended this direction for a right-handed golfer, I can't start the sequence first. This always starts first. So positions matter when it comes to that point. So you saw Mo, he was tilted, right? That tilt put him in, an, in the angular position to accelerate the pelvis first. And the pelvis went forward in its initial rotation, right? So Look, these things are very important if you don't get them right, but you got to measure it too. So don't just take my, don't just go run out there right now and try this stuff. You, we, I have to show you the ways of measuring and getting it right. It's, you know, if you're a member, because we have discounts for our members, obviously, in these master classes. If you're a member, you're going to send your videos into coaches. That's what I want you to do. You need to be, you need to be doing this stuff and letting our coaches look at it. If you're a non-member, you're still getting great discounts on this stuff, which is great, but you got to measure yourself. So, I mean, my recommendation is is work with our coaches as you go through this process. So, no, I think that's it's definitely a good point as as especially for members is that there is that opportunity to coach now. And if you're a single plane academy uh, anywhere member, uh, 
If you're a leader VIP and you're not uncoached now, that's obviously a bigger problem. I'll be talking to my staff about that. But uh, everybody else, you know, you guys should be uh, be definitely using coach now. We're not using V1 anymore if, if anybody doesn't know that. But, um, hey, man, I think it was a great session tonight. Yeah. That was really good. Um, I'm really excited about the upcoming all-new Power Generation Masterclass. Anybody so asking questions or anything? No, there. Well, the, the problem is your brother. He got in. He got into the webinar now. He's been in the chat all night. Oh, okay. He's been. He's been working That's it. Good. I mean, it's been fire, rapid That's fire. Good. Tim Grace, which honestly, because he's usually up here, guys are loving it. Good. So interact with him. It's right. it's been really good. So good. Um, well, and, and, and on that note, so in inside the masterclass, amid, in the mid session of the masterclass, I do a live training. Yep. So you'll get access. So really, what you should do is get the masterclass. You'll have questions about your training in the class. Bring them to me. We'll do a live session and one at the end. Yep. That's the way to do this. So the, the questions will be great. Yeah. yeah. And this is, we did uh, live sessions, a part of the Mind of Mo Masterclass, which guys really thought were really great because then they talked to Tim and, and Paul and were able to ask questions at, you know, different points. So it was, it was really neat to do yeah. it that way. And we've started to utilize Zoom a lot more so that you can be able to be on camera on your computer and interact directly with, uh, with Todd. Or so um, anything else? Any wise words for the week? No, uh, going to the weekend. Um, I mean, now's a good time. Now's a good time to be working on the power and speed of your swing because, look, this you'll get more out of this master class than yeah. going out there and hitting golf balls. I mean, yeah. you go out there and just pound golf balls, you're not going to get much out of it. Matter of fact, there's not one session I give my students now where we're not stabilizing the lower body. So yeah. it's going to be a really important class. No, and that's yeah. definitely good. And that also can translate into a single plane putting system, too. Oh, yeah, he's te teasing you about the putting system, which, oh, my God, I can't wait for that. It's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So it was a great night. Thank hey, thanks yeah, for letting great. me host and be a yeah, part of it. Be great. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, we will see you all in August for our next Plane Talk.